hello there friends joanna here welcome to my channel thank you guys so much for joining me a look at those beautiful blues that we're going to be playing with today they're so gorgeous i am so addicted to that cernet translucent blue which i'm using today as well as all the other colors now uh today's project was absolutely not what it turned out to be which was a very nice surprise and i think that exactly what happens when you sometimes just play around with clay and you don't know what you're going to get so with that being said let me show you guys how I came up with these beauties yes I know don't panic everyone okay yes I'm working on a Skinner blend it's not gonna be as bad as you think uh, there is a peacock and the pearl and this one here I'm just uh, mixing some leftover peacock black and pearl I just want to get a darker shade of the peacock and there you have it it looks actually really nice on the Skinner blend and I have seen others taking their sides and just folding them uh, them in and then running the whole thing through the thinnest setting of the pasta machine to get a really nice and straight strip and it actually worked for me it really did I'm so excited that uh, actually my Skinner blend is not looking that bad now uh, what I'm doing is I'm rolling it in with the pearl being on the inside and then we're going to get darker as we go on the outside of the circle and after we're going to be done with the entire roll the whole thing is going to be try to get as much air out of it as possible so it's a bunch of squeezing squeezing rolling rolling and back and forth and back and forth and you can take a little slice and if you still see uh, some air pockets that means that you're gonna have to work on it a little bit more but you can see that today uh, that today I'm actually turning it into a little cube and um, I'm going to put it on the side and I'm going to run a Skinner blend with Cernet Translucent, the Turquoise and the Sapphire, which I'm so in love with. The Sapphire Cernet Translucent is absolutely stunning. So just a quick Skinner blend with those two colors and I actually don't even know if that added anything to the pendant, but I did it. So I'm showing you guys that I did it okay so now i also got a little bit of translucent clay and i'm going to add some imperial uh, emerald mica powder which is causing a stir i cannot use it in the title of my videos because then everybody thinks that i'm creating emerald <laughs> I'm confusing the whole world but there you have it i'm just going to get uh, the excess off and put it on the side and now I go off to slicing and I'm slicing both of my canes actually lengthwise. So this one I think was sliced slightly thicker than my translucent cane. You can see it actually you could probably just create a pendant with that slice. I mean it just looks so so pretty. Anyway so this is my translucent. I do run it just slightly thinner because I really want it to be more translucent. And when I'm going to start putting my uh, little cube here together so I'm taking my peacock cane then I'm adding some silver leaf and then the translucent cane goes on and then I'm putting some of that um, imperial imperial emerald um, translucent and that's exactly how the cane is going I'm really sloppy about it as you can see there's nothing pretty about it I'm just throwing you know silver leaf in between the translucents there's really no rhyme reason what i'm doing and you can see that you know i take off some edges if they are too long um you know it, what what did i say in the, my last video that uh, my pendants are um come out perfectly imperfect right <laughs> <laughs> all right so here is my little glob of clay and I'm just going to work on it really hard so that all the bubbles from inside are gone okay so I saw Deb from clay boutique take uh, something long and she created those indentations in her uh, clay in her brick of clay so I decided to see how how that would um, add movement to my clay I'm sure you guys all are watching her she's freaking brilliant 
um, all I do is I can just learn from her because she just knows so much when it comes to clay but uh, there you have it I'm just going to squeeze it just a little bit more and make sure that we don't have those air pockets and that there is a really nice movement in my clay okay so time to take that first slice and honestly I love those first few slices because you just look at it and you're like oh wow is this how it goes is this how it turns out it really is pretty awesome to have that first slice and you actually can see how your pieces are or your pieces going to come out but with this one I had no idea the direction that I was going to go into but before that I rolled out some white translucent oh my gosh what was the name of it you know what it's by Cernet glitter it's white glitter translucent that's what it is okay and I rolled it out on the thinner setting of the pasta machine and I figured if I'm going to put it on top of my pieces when I'm gonna bake it you'll get this really nice glitter on the pendant because there is not enough glitter and shine on it right so anyways so I put it on my pieces and then I decided well let me run it through a pasta machine and see what happens and so I did and look at that and I started getting so much more movement and you can see that translucent and the sparkle in there oh my gosh I get so excited and look at this I took another piece and I ran it through the pasta machine and I just run it through going one way you know going do not switch uh, ways just go one way and of course you have to decrease as you're running it so go from number two to three to four to five but look at that I had no idea that I was going to make a pendant like that but I totally love that movement it's like a you know it's it's just I can't express it but it was just so fun creating these pieces because they were totally not what I was after to begin with and this is what I was ending up with <laughs> But at this point, so that you know that glitter, translucent clay, is super thin. And I'm going to show you guys how it really comes out at the end. It really may, maybe would have been better if it was just a little bit thicker. But uh, it's still beautiful and gorgeous in the end product. Yeah, these designs were totally not what I intended, uh, you know, this project to be. And I absolutely love the way this came out. So I'm taking some pearl and of course I'm going to start chopping. I'm just, just chopping and designing pendants. And each piece is going to create one pendant. So you can see that I'm getting plenty of pendants. <laughs> And of course I would take the scraps and I would use the scraps for the backing to the next pendant and then the next pendant and so on and so forth. And you can see I'm not using just one shape uh, just because I felt that some of them just started looking better in the teardrop shape. And there you have it. Look at those beauties. They came out of the oven and they look so, so beautiful. I, I really cannot even tell you guys how pretty those, those colors are. And the design came out pretty cool. Do you see that this little glitter on them? That is that white cernet glitter. It, it's just, it's like there, but it's not there. Do you see that? It's so beautiful. Adds such a great touch to the pendant. You can see it even better right here on the stake. So you can see what's below it. But it just this beautiful sh shimmer. Oh, I can't even describe how beautiful this is. So now you guys know how unexpected a project can come out because this is not what I was going after when I first started off and look at this I really love those well my friends let me know what you think about this project it wasn't too difficult was it I know there were a bunch of layers but you could, could probably cut off half of them and you could get something absolutely beautiful magnificent with that being said my friends till next time ta-ta